Hi guys, this is Nanja Wardrobe. Um, my name is Ewase. Um, before I get started, are you wondering why I'm dressed like this? The state and condition in Nigeria got me like this because I woke up, read the news, and it triggered my anxiety. I had to do a little bit of yoga before doing this, before coming down to talk to because if you haven't seen the news lately, you won't understand. The level of insecurity. There are over seven states in Nigeria right now that are being taken over by unknown gunmen. There's River State, there's um, Kaduna, there's Benue, there's Lagos, there's Imo State. Now the issue of the issue of insecurity in Nigeria was brought up in the National Assembly by Smart Ademi, where he poured out his heart. He was in tears talking about how Nigeria is going down by the day with the whole situation with unknown gunmen doing this and all that. He poured out his heart. Okay, let's take a look at this. Let's let's take a look at the video. Arise to support the motion. I'm smart at the end. And I represent the good people of Kogu West. Mr. President, insecurity is a serious problem today in Nigeria. And there comes a time when you cannot but speak the truth, irrespective of the sentiment you may share. Today, Mr. President, all of us have been threatened, our families, our nation, our state. Order, order. A lot has been said this morning, Mr. President, and I want to thank you for giving us time to speak expressly on this issue. Like my sister was saying, there comes a time when talk will talk itself. There comes a time when truth will become like a torchlight in the midst of silence. So you are forced to talk. Mr. President, we need not run away from the fact that more than ever before in the history of our nation, this is the worst instability we are facing. In fact, this is worse than the civil war. Are you impeded? Mr. President, eh? the solution is very simple. Today, there are a lot of misgiving, a lot of misinterpretations of what is happening. Some people believe, some people in government that are supporting this move. Some people believe some people sponsor those who are destabilizing our nation within the country. The answer is very simple. We cannot pretend that we are capable of, of confronting the situation in our hands. America, as powerful as they are, when the pandemic came, it got to a point that China had to come, they came to their rescue. We shouldn't pretend that we needed foreign support now. Let nobody deceive us, Mr. President. A lot of billions of naira have been voted for, for security uh, 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 services. Nothing is coming out of it. We want to wait until our nation gets bombed. Let us shout and call for foreign, uh, foreign support. I am a big APC man and I've been supporting my party. But the president should get to know that it has gotten to a point that we who are supporters, who are members of the APC, we can no longer keep quiet. The president was right on the occasion. You are say we are so You will not see the truth and you are afraid to say it because you will die. We must open, Mr. President, the nation is on fire. The president was right for the occasion. It costs us nothing to get foreign, foreign support. We must rise for the occasion. We must bring people to save this country. Or else we will be consumed. Every one of us will have a chapter for history. Whenever the history of this period will be, will be written, whatever is our position, we have a chapter. We cannot keep quiet any longer. It has gotten to a point that we cannot sleep with our two eyes closed. We are not free. Our children are not free. 
The person that was right for education, there is no nation that is so powerful that it doesn't need support of other nations. Any individual could not, cannot say you will leave the world without any other person with you. So we must rise. The situation is, we have, our security system has collapsed. It has failed. And because it has failed, we need to look for foreign support. It costs Nigeria nothing. Forget the ego ego, forget the superiority of Nigeria in African nations. Today, we are facing serious problems. If our nation is to survive this period, I'm, I'm not in doubt that the security architecture we have today cannot cope with what we are facing. Every part of this country is stretching from the north to the south. Nobody is safe. Nobody can travel 50 kilometers in our nation. I feel like sending there for a country that we grew up. Where nobody has asked you to travel from Lagos to Matuguri. I don't need in time pass today. I cannot travel from here to Kaduna to North Kansas where I was born. The president must know that this is a bad time for our nation. We must look for foreign support to save this nation. This is my position, Mr. President. We must rise to it. We are killing people in the east, in the west, in the south, in the north. We should shut down the National Assembly. Let's not tell if we cannot save this country. We stay in our homes. Our country is bleeding. People are in poverty. There is no food. People are hungry. Insecurity is threatening us. We cannot pretend. His brother was not here. Those of us who are here, people are dying. Every day, the Nigerians are dying. We must not talk education. I show me, Mr. President. Okay. Did you notice something? Did you guys notice anything? Listen. Mr. President, the solution is very simple. Today, there are a lot of misgivings, a lot of misinterpretations of what is happening. Before I go into that, now look at look at the environment a lot of other nonchalant behaviors you see from his colleagues and these are these are legislators he seems to be the only one concerned about the insecurity in nigeria at the moment you can hear the pain in his voice. I was expecting others to be on their feet, applauding in agreement and solidarity. But instead, we have Senator Remy Tinibu tackling him for say, by saying, uh, I am PDP. We are a wolf in a sheep's clothing. Listen. Run away from the fact that more than ever before in the history of our nation, this is the worst instability we are facing. In fact, this is worse than the civil war. Are you in Mr. President, eh? the solution is very simple. Today, there are a lot of misgiving, a lot of misinterpretations of what is happening. Like, does it mean those we appointed as leaders don't care about the tragedy that is befalling our country? Like, we are on our own. We want to fight for ourselves, to fight for ourselves. You don't care. This, this, at this point, this should really be a PDP versus APC thing. You guys should come and you guys should come as one right now to fight this. At this day and age, insecurity shouldn't be our problem. Insecurity shouldn't be our problem. We don't have a lot of leaders out there fighting for us. Everybody is more concerned about what goes into their projects. If you listen to if you listen to what um, Senator Remy Tinubu said, she's literally saying, "Are you with us or against us? Are you with us, APC or against us, BDP?" I saw a tweet where someone wrote, "I won't pay attention to the divisive." Remy Tinibu. I will focus on this wise man, Smart Adini. I may not be his fan, but you can tell he wasn't speaking like an APC party man. Forget politics. There is fire on the mountain. Nigeria is battling stage 3 cancer. Where is the lie? Where is the lie? Because it looks like we're, we're heading into somewhere that we cannot get ourselves out of. How do you get yourself out of this? Because personally, who will take us to the promised land? 
the way we're going deep, deep, deep into the ground on a daily. Now look at the current situation in Gaiden. People don't feel safe anymore in their own very country. In your very father's land, you don't feel safe. They're leaving. And it's not like they even know where they're going to. How safe is it? How safe is where you're going to? You don't know. But you just can't stand what is happening in the current place you live in. Why are all these things happening at the same time? Also, River State has imposed a six, sorry, an 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew because of the recent attacks on security personnel in the state. Police officers, customs and um, civil defense services who are on duty we are murdered on the 24th. And on the 25th, the Nigerian army was attacked while on duty. This, these are people who took oath to protect us, to fight for us. And now we have unknown gunmen, unknown gunmen coming to attack. Now we're talking about insecurities and they are coming for the security, the little security we have already. The incident in River State, which led to the curfew, the 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew, is said to be done by outsiders. It's an outsider that's coming into the state to create havoc. Now, this got me questioning, why do we always have security problems whenever elections are closing up? Why? Speaking of the case of um, insecurity in Nigeria, the list is endless. I mean, on the 14th of March 2021, 39 students were kidnapped in Afaka. In Afaka. On the 13th, GSSS in Ikara was attacked. On, the, on March 15th, three primary school teachers were kidnapped. On the 20th of April 2021, six were killed in Ekiti. On the 21st of April, 40 kidnapped at Greenfield University, Kaduna. On April 22nd, 18 kidnapped in Moyo and 45 kidnapped in Zamfara. On the 24th of April, three Greenfield students were kidnapped. All this in less than a month. Students are being killed in Benue, Kaduna, Imo State. Police stations are burned down, security officers are killed and attacked. In the in the northeast, terrorists are holding up towns, bandits are in the northwest, kidnapping in the southeast. What is Buhari doing about this? What is Buhari doing? Where is Buhari in all this that is going on? In the midst of all this, Erify hiked the school fees for non-indigents uh, in Kaduna from about from uh, from twenty six thousand naira to five hundred thousand naira. <laughs> and again, Boko Haram has released a video of Kaduna students after holding them captive for about forty seven days. <laughs> Allah, ya yum dan Allah Please, you are calling on our parents to help us to come and take us out of here. They should try their possible best to see us out of here. We are suffering. Some of us are sick. We've not been eating well. Please, parents, help us so that we could come outside from this place. Okay, do go now, go. So, uh, My name is Benson Emmanuel. Please, we are begging on our parents, please, to come and help us out of here. We've stayed here, we've stayed here for days. We have not been eating. Most of us have been sick. 
you are supposed to be hungry, please. You, go, you are begging on my parents, please come and help us, please. Please, we are tired of here, please, please. You don't do anything as a house, sir. Hmm? Yeah. 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 Gajiba my chan abinchi. Gachi you ga must a lowly dam and last year make him sakar oak and he can oak it. Zus Wachima our in your corner could not come. You can never be in the shed and you put the book in the book. So much on your name. Meanwhile, in Benway, um, the Marco de Lafia Highway has been blocked by IDP. IDPs from um, Abagan, Abagana camp. They are protesting the killings by herdsmen. This led them to lay um, cops by the roadside, those who have been killed by the herdsmen. They have the governor of the state, Samuel Odon, speak to them. Government, that what is happening, if the federal government are taking proactive steps, Today will not be where we are. These cops you are seeing here, in the last two weeks, we are burying over 70 people just in Makudi local government alone. This development, and this is not accepted. Go to Guma, the same killings are taking place. Go to Gua West, the same killings are taking place. This is not right. The federal government have refused to take proactive steps to arrest this ugly situation that we are witnessing here today. You will recall that I alerted the entire nation where Fulani is in 14 countries met in Yola and declared that except we repeal the prohibition of open grazing law, Benway will not know peace. And on the ground, I did say that I was targeted for elimination to be assassinated, and that was done on me. It's only God that saved me. And I did say they are going after my people. So, federal government should arrest the leadership of Mayor Tia Lakota and Hore that hosted that meeting. Up to today, nothing has been done. This is really unfortunate. It means we don't have a government in place at the federal level. We don't have a government. This is very sad. Because if proactive steps were taken by arresting the ATL and leadership, this will not happen. For several years, we have been calling on federal government to take proactive steps to address this matter they have refused to do. Okay, now we have the chief security of the state asking the, for the help of the federal government. His life has been put in, put in danger. He mentioned it in the video. And his state isn't safe because he opened up his mouth to talk about the insecurity and danger these people are in. At this point, we have civilians. We have governors begging the federal government for something as basic as security. Is that what is supposed to be happening? Is that how it's supposed to go? Now, here is a clip of Boko Haram shooting in Yobi, in Yobi State, that the matter to be precise.
all honesty, this, is, this isn't the time to say, oh, let's pray for Nigeria, let's pray for Nigeria. We have to sit up on our own. 2023 is fast approaching. Where is your voter's card? If you don't have one, get one. Make use of it. You and I can make that change we need for this country. You and I can turn things around for this country. If we keep selling our votes, if we keep selling our souls to these people, if we keep selling our conscience to these people, mind you, if you don't touch you, you will touch your family member. This thing will reach each and every one of us if we don't take matters into our own hand. Don't give the excuse that you don't have a full task card. You still have the time to get one. Make use of it. This is the right time we can have that change we so much talk about, we so much need. Because imagine Nigeria falling into the hands again of these same politicians that are dragging us to the mud. You might think, uh, I'll, 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 anyway, I'm in the abroad, nothing's gonna do me. I mean, this, how about your family? Are they safe? Are they? So, think about it. Drop your comments and reactions. Thanks for watching. This is Niger Watch Blog. My name is Ewase.